Guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you being here. My name is Sam and this is Crawler Tracks. You know us for our obstacles, but in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at something that's a little bit smaller than we're used to. Yeah, even smaller than these guys back here, but has a massive heart. And we wanna show it to you. This is the only one in the country right now. So sit back and relax. And we're going to introduce you to a whole nother level of micro crawling with reaching in my pocket this guy this is the fx 132 and i'm not even sure what they're designating it right now uh i'll have to look it up if you know put it in the comments but this guy is unreal brushless motor well we'll talk about it later you're gonna love it so stay tuned. We're going to go through each and every detail of this pint-sized crawler. Let's go. All right, guys, before we tear into this micro, it's, I wouldn't even call it micro, it's a tiny crawler, it's smaller than micro. The 132nd scale. Let's look at the transmitter. Transmitter is pretty standard Fury Tech transmitter. Um, not all Fury Techs look like this, but I think this is a Fly Sky, if I remember right. It's a Fly Sky platform. But you've got your steering door rates, your steering trim, your throttle door rates, your throttle trim some dip switches for some additional functionality, and I'm not 100% sure what those do, because this little guy, because it's such an early, I wouldn't even call it a prototype, it's such an early version, the, <laughs> the owner's manual was pretty um, much non-existent, and let me show you that right now. This is the box that came in. So remember, there, this is probably a pre-production model. In fact, it is a pre-production model. model can't talk today and here is what it came with basically this is how to use the lizard <laughs> PSC not a ton on there for sure but you know it's pretty cool and you're gonna love it the lizard pro manual that's what this is it says right on the top anyway you're gonna love this thing let's uh let's jump into it so I'm assuming really quickly that none of these dip switches work on this transmitter. The channel three does nothing and the channel four does nothing. So, yeah. Anyway, let's jump into what y'all have been waiting for for us to show you, and it's this guy. All right, guys, I had to bust out the laptop because this thing didn't even come with any specifications on the box. So I really had to look this stuff up. <laughs> and, and it's so new and such a new setup I don't even know. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head. So we're going to re here we are on the Fury Tech website, furytechusa.com. Um, and we're just going to go through some of the spec specifications really quickly. I don't want to bore you with all the specifications, but I want to give you a, uh, a little bit of an idea of what this guy is and how it performs. So officially, this is a Fury Tech FX132 MT Etna <laughs> or ETNA, whatever we're going to call that however they pronounce it it's the etna i'm pretty sure that's how they say it i don't know if they named it off of uh incredibles <laughs> etna mose but i don't know anyway this is a brushless rtr or ready to run this is the way it came in the box and if you plan on picking one of these guys up this is the way it will come to you all you need 
is four AAA batteries. I think I said double A's before. Four AAA batteries for the remote, and you are set. Um, it retails for $269.99. You can pre-order now if, by going to furytechusa.com, and we'll put a link in the description below to this guy so you can pick one up for yourself. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm still blown away by this guy. Look at that itty bitty micro servo. You see that? It's right there. It's amazing. It really is. And there's a receiver. I don't know if you can see it right back there underneath the wires. There's a receiver that sits right there. All right, guys. <laughs> That's it. This thing is tiny. <laughs> it amazes me how small this thing is. Now, for those of you wondering, you know, that looks awfully like an Orlando. Uh, and you would be right. It is. But Orlando's partnered up with Fury Tech, or rather, Fury Tech's partnered up with Orlando. And you can, as you can see, you guys recognize that guy right there. That is the Orlando motor, or sorry, not motor. That is the Orlando lo logo. Orlando, Orlando, I don't even know how you say that. I think it's Orlando. But anyway, we're going to say Orlando for today's episode. But you'll notice also, there's a Lizard Pro crammed in this little guy. There's the battery right there. We're going to go through all the specifications, so don't freak out. And then right there, right in the center, you see that little guy right there? That is the heart of a lion. That is the Fury Tech Ant brushless motor. It's absolutely amazing. And then with this rig, it makes the perfect desktop crawler. Let me show you what I mean. All right, guys, let's talk about specifications. This is the next day, to be honest, and I had to reach out to Fury Tech because, like I said, the box, as you can see here, the box comes with nothing. Of course, once again, it's a prototype or it's not a prototype. It's a um, early version, I guess, if you will, before a pre-release version, not a prototype, pre-release pre version. And, and obviously there's nothing on the box. And we know there's not anything on the instructions as I showed you earlier, that's just to the Lizard Pro. And we're very familiar with the Lizard Pro, but if you're not, let's talk about the Lizard Pro for a minute. The Lizard Pro is a 30 amp ESC with FOC technology and it will control a brushed or a brushless motor such as what's in this uh, Micro FX132 uh, with the amp brushless motor. Um, it has Bluetooth and you are able to program it via your cell phone on the app. And Fury Tech has done a phenomenal job on the app. So it makes it super easy to program just about anything and you can tweak just about anything you can imagine on that little ESC right there. You see, there it is. <laughs> it's kind of scratched up, it came that way. I'm not sure if it was just a, because this is a pre-release, but uh, it's all good. We know it's a Lizard Pro because it says right there. Next, let's talk about the amp brushless motor. We know that's the power plant and it honestly has a ton of torque. Um, the ant, I'm looking on my spec sheet here, is a 12 pole high torque motor, has some a, B, C, E, C, five bearings, and it is billet aluminum, and the heat sink is billet aluminum. So, oh, I guess there's a little heat sink there. That's cool. 3456 KV motor, as we, as we saw, as we can read on the can of the motor. Um, this guy, amazingly, is two to three S compatible. I would... <laughs> It would be absolutely bonkers with a 3S in this guy. Right now it comes with a little uh, 2.4, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> right now it comes with a little 240 milliamp hour two cell, 7.4 volt for those of you who speak in volts. Um, but I can't imagine this little guy on a three cell, let alone having to cram a three cell in here. You'd probably have to strap it to the top, but Man, a three cell on this would be nutso. Um, looks like the motor is a 12 pole. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a bunch of other, you can look it up on Fury Tech's website. They've got all the specifications there. So that gives you pretty much it. 
Uh, I think I said the FOC, the field, field oriented control, that's your slow crawl. That's when it switches, when it's slow and then there's a hesitation and it switches to fast. For those of you who don't know, FOC, that's what it stands for, field oriented control. And that's what gives you the textbook Fury Text slow crawl is that FOC control. It's amazing. It dissipates heat very effectively and, and maximizes efficiency. So that is the Fury Tech Ant motor. And remember, as we said earlier, it is a 3456 kV. 3456 kV. Little teeny guy right here in the front of the Rock Basher one FX 132. Um, let's talk about the transmission. And there, it looks like they're calling it the Ant transmission as well. It's an N20 1 to 20 gear ratio. So let's talk about the specifications of this guy. Uh, <laughs> it says on Orlando's website, because once again, Fury Tech didn't give much information on their website about the actual Orlando part of this or Orlando part of this. Uh, it says perfect, micro size, perfect for the home or office use. I testify to that. I've used it around the home, but I've also used it in my office. Uh, I like to just throw things out on the desk and <laughs> crawl over it on my lunch or on a break, my keyboard, my mouse. <laughs> it's kind of fun, actually. Um, it's more fun than I expected it to be. Let's put it that way. Um, super grippy scale tires. Uh, I'm going to be honest about these tires. Um, they're great, but I ordered a second set and they're, the, the factory ones come glued on. And I haven't glued this set on because I'm not sure if I want to keep these, these wheels and I'll be honest, these tires are a pain in the butt to keep on the, on the crawler. Um, but I think with my new wheels, they're going to be a lot easier, but these ones are just plastic wheels. I'm not sure if you can see that there plastic wheels. Um, the tires actually do say Orlando on them. Uh, so they're the exact same ones that came stock on it, but I ordered a sec a second set just so I had it. And these tires do not like to stay on this crawler at all. It's, they come off real easy. I know they probably should be glued on, but I hesitated to do that because once again, um, now let's talk about the, the crawler itself, the Orlando part of this, the Orlando, I keep calling Orlando, Orlando part of this crawler for a second. Remember the electronics are hundred percent Fury tech, but the rest of it is Orlando and it's even Orlando, Orlando. <laughs> How do you say it? Comment down below. It's even got the little Orlando logo right there on the side. It's on both sides, actually. You can kind of see it etched in the, in the metal there. The cool thing about this is those are actual metal panels. They're cut out on a laser and they're actual metal panels. So it makes it really scale and probably super durable because if you scrape up on a rock, those are metal. They're, they're gonna take the abuse. Full-time four-wheel drive. So it's got the, these little shafts, which I think are the, one of the coolest parts of this. If you look right there, you can see the little drive shafts. So they've got the, the red ends on them. It's not focusing. Hello. Focus, not on me. There we go. Um, the red things are the ends of the drive shaft. I think those look super cool. Um, they're super small and super thin, which I was really surprised at. Like I said, I have one in the box, but I really haven't opened it. It's just been sitting up there waiting for me to get the nerve to build. Um, what's next? It does have four link suspension front and rear, as you can see. There's a four link suspension. Um, I'll be honest, I have had problems with this link right here, this upper link. It has come out of the plastic numerous times. I've actually ordered another axle housing to uh, fix it. The screws stripped out. I even tried super glue. It does strip out. So just be aware when you're dealing with the super small screws, they strip really easily. You have to be super careful as you're screwing them in. The stripping of that screw on that upper link is probably my fault because it came out once. Actually, it first came out at the competition uh, when I took this to the Micro Crawler Club con competition. It probably, it came out then and I probably put it in and, and just wasn't careful enough. And so um, probably not the fault of anything manufacturing wise here. It's probably me just cranking it too hard. So be aware of that. The next thing on this, tires. The tires are actually pretty decent. Now, I did order a second set of tires. The first set I have are actually glued onto the wheels. Um, they have a little bit of super glue. You can get them off, but it does do a little bit of damage to the tires. I ordered a second set because I'm thinking about upgrading this guy. If you want to see those upgrades in a future video, leave us a comment down below. 
but I've got some wheels, some aluminum wheels for this, and I've got some longer shocks, as well as a few other things that I wanna see if I can upgrade this guy and make it be even a better performer. So yes, the tires, what I was saying, the tires are super grippy. They're actually pretty soft. They actually do come with foam inserts. In fact, let me take one of them off. You'll see how easy they come off. Just like that, there's the tire. They come right off. And you'll notice inside the tires, there's a foam insert. So they do come with foams, but I do know that the tires, once they're not glued, or I put these tires on not glued onto these wheels, they tend to come off all the time. They're kind of a pain in the butt um, just because they do come off and these tires are super wide compared to these wheels. So they like to pop the bead all the time. I, I know they're supposed to be glued on, but I have not done that because I've got some, like I said earlier, I've got some of those aluminum wheels I wanna put on this thing. So um, kind of a pain to get the tires on and off, uh, not off, but on anyway, but they, they don't like to stay on all the time. If I were to stuff this in my pocket and pull it out, I'd have to remount the tire. So, so be aware of that. Speaking of shocks, it does have friction shocks or friction dampeners. So just be aware that, uh, that they are kind of bouncy. It does bounce quite a bit. Um, general specifications on this guy. Let me look at my list here. General specifications are 122 millimeters long by 55 millimeters high. The track width on it is 61 millimeters and the wheelbase is 89 millimeters. So the track width is from side to side and the wheelbase is from front to back. Once again, track width is your 61 millimeters and your, your wheelbase is 89 millimeters. According to uh, Orlando's website, what you need to complete it is a 2.2 gram micro server, micro server, a micro servo. This comes, once again, pre-installed. That's what's the beauty of this FuryTech FX132 is it's pre-built, ready to run. Um, you'll need a Orlando Hunter motor, as they say on here, but once again, this has got the Fury Tech. You'll need the battery, and you'll need ESC, and a transmitter and receiver. So those are just some of the specifications that you'll need. Um, let me see if there's anything else on here. You know what? It doesn't look like much. <laughs> it does say kit assembly require may require some parts. Kit assembly may require some parts, may need to be slightly sanded or trimmed, to get a perfect finish. Not quite English on there. Anyway, um, <laughs> makes me laugh. Uh, and then obviously there are probably some parts that you'd need to paint if you bought the kit. But all in all, for 260 bucks, I think, uh, it's a great value. And the biggest value in my opinion, if you want a pocket size crawler like this, is the fact that you don't have to build it. It comes ready to run. You plug it in, you open it up, charge it up, plug it in, and you're off to the trails. So just keep that in mind. It's 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 small. I, I can't say I would ever take this out anywhere but an indoor comp or using on my desk, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun as an indoor crawler. The my biggest selling point for this little guy is I can take it just about anywhere. I just stick it in my pocket and I'm off to the races. It's smaller than the transmitter. There you go. So it's a great value for what it is. And uh, I think you guys are gonna love it. Fury Tech's done an amazing job with this micro motor. It is this ant, it is super smooth and it is quiet. You can barely hear this guy or that might just be my old man ears. I would love to see what we can do to make this perform even better. But for the most part, it surprised me. I'm super impressed by something that I honestly thought I wouldn't drive more than a handful of times. And I've really driven this guy into the ground. He's, he's been awesome. Man, can you guys hear the rain out there? It is coming down. Holy cow. All right, once again, the Fury Tech FX132, this guy's freaking amazing. I love it. It's amazing how small they can make these parts and actually make a hobby grade crawler <laughs> out of these guys. I know it's in Orlando, but the, the cool part about this thing is the electronics. The FOC, the Fury Tech Slow Crawl, which Fury Tech's known for, the little teeny brushless motor, the Fury Tech Lizard Pro with Bluetooth so you can tune it from your phone. It's amazing, it really is, guys. All right, now, quickly, because we knew we were gonna have to do this review, 
I need your guys' help. I need you to comment down below if you guys wanna see us develop what I'm about to show you next. We have been working on these as hard as we can and as fast as we can to bring you the 132nd scale crawler obstacles. <laughs> Here's what they are. This is kind of similar to our current wave. We don't know what we're gonna call these yet, but these are 132nd scale. And here's the cool thing about these obstacles. This right here is a true 124 scale. This is a mini Z. And we have designed these obstacles to not only fit the FX 132, but also to perfectly fit the mini Z's as well. Now, this could probably go on some of our bigger obstacles for all these guys back here, but most, this is pretty small because as we know, your SCX 24 is not really a 24 scale. It's more like 30, or sorry, 20 seconds, or 20 second scale. <sighs> it's been a long day. 20 second scale. This is a true 24 scale. Speaking of mini Z's, let me show you the size comparison here. That FX132 could basically fit in the cab of this Mini Z. That just tells you how tiny these things are, right? There's how small it is. Look at this, right on top. Fit in the cab, just like that. Now let's compare it to, um, I don't know, the SX, the SCX24. Let's compare it to the SCX24 here. It can sit right in the bed. Look at that. It's pretty small compared to a 20 second scale or what Axial calls a 24 scale. Wheelbase, pretty small. Um, obviously, 18 scale is it's gonna it's gonna be dwarfed in an 18 scale just like that it's pretty small compared to the 18 scale now a lot of you are probably wondering well compare it to that's crooked compare it to the uh, FX 118 I got you here is my fury wagon my FX 118 this thing is amazing here is the FX-132. Again, fits in the bed. Really nice. Right? Just like that, you can kind of see just how big it is compared to the top. And you can see the difference in wheelbase there. So, pretty pocket size, literally. You can fit this thing in your pocket. By the way, just some common household items. Can of soda. Here's our FX-132. <laughs> it's about the same size, <laughs> the wheelbase wise. So there you go. So there's a can of soda, you kind of get an idea. Let's see if we have a dollar bill. I do, I always carry a $2 bill in my wallet. Just so you know, there's the inside life of, of Sam here. I always carry a $2 bill in my wallet. Don't ask me why, my wife's carried one forever and. About four years ago, I started carrying one as well. $2 bill, FX-132. Look how cool that is. Look how small it is. It's literally a pocket crawler. But back to our tracks. We have pushed to develop these. They're still kind of, we're still testing, I guess, if you will. We have pushed to develop these so that if you guys want, and you have to leave us a comment below, we can release these for your FX-132 and your Mini-Z crawlers. They're, once again, like all the rest of our obstacles, completely adjustable. These are solid pieces. Obviously, they slot into these four slots, but you can remove and flip. So, much like all our obstacles, are fully adjustable so you don't get bored and our replay value is high. This is one set that we've done. And here's another set that we've done. Again, utilizing the same base. 
and we've done two different obstacles on this base plate. We've got some staggered teeter-totters or seesaws, and then we've got some varying terrain just so you get a pretty good idea of how this works. So we'll put a link to this in the description below, furytechusa.com, and you guys will be able to check one of these out when they're released. They're actually on pre-order currently, so if you wanna pre-order it, I know I've heard around the interwebs, some people have pre-ordered it. Uh, it makes a great desktop crawler. I will probably, once we're done with this guy, um, I'll keep it at work and just keep it at my desk and I can crawl on it and, you know, on my breaks and on my lunch and, and you know, when I need to free my mind for a minute, it's, it makes a great, great, it's a great crawler for that type of, of crawling. Um, if you guys want to see us take it outside somewhere and see if we can actually tackle some rocks, leave us a comment down below. All right. That being said, let's show you some run footage. Let's get it on the trail. All right. Let's get this plugged in. All righty. Shove this down in there like so, so it looks like a real rock bouncer. Turn on my transmitter. We know it's moving, but it's moving super slow. And it's a speedy little thing too. If I need to punch out, it'll move. All right, let's crawl over this guy. Here comes the drop. <laughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Let's go back the other way. Here comes the drop. <laughs> so cool. So quiet. Check out how quiet it is. All right, this is gonna be interesting. Need to get that Fury Tech slow crawl on. The drop over, yeah. Now the seesaws. Now because these are still prototypes, we know that we need to put some traction on these seesaws. Actually, this one's not doing too bad right now. <laughs> Love it. Oh, I got off track. <laughs> Tumble Wumble. <laughs> oh! All right, guys, thanks for joining me as we've explored this epic, I don't know, micro, pint size, tiny crawler <laughs> with the Fury Tech Lizard Pro and the Ant brushless motor. This thing's crazy. 
It's crazy small and it truly is a pocket sized crawler. I take this thing to work all the time and you know when I need a break or on my lunch, I just throw some random objects, my mouse, my keyboard, some pens <laughs> on my desk and I crawl over them. In fact, I even take these guys to work with me and it makes for a perfect desktop crawler. Um, leave us a comment down below if you guys plan on picking one of these up and uh, speaking of comments, we'll leave a description. We'll, we'll leave a link in the description below where you can pre-order this. It's on pre-order now. Um, FuryTechUSA.com, if you uh, haven't guessed. Big thanks and shout out to FuryTech for sending us this guy to review and give you guys some awesome content on. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's changing the world of the micro crawlers or the pocket sized crawlers, I guess, if you will. Um, speaking of comments, if you want to see us further develop these guys, leave us a comment down below. Uh, we'd be happy to. We've already kind of got two of them, three of them laid out. Um, if you want to see us further develop the obstacles for the 132nd scale and that guy right there, the Z Mini Zs, let us know. We'd be happy to. We're excited for this platform. We're excited for this scale. Redefining the micro scale uh, market, it's, it's amazing. But once again, this is the FuryTech FX 132, FuryTech FX 132 and Aetna, it, the MT Aetna, I guess, if you will. Let me get that right. FuryTech FX 132 MT Aetna. It's got a brushless motor and a Lizard Pro. <laughs> it's tiny. I love it. It's been a lot of fun. Shout out to FuryTech for letting us be the first in this great United States of America to have one of these guys. Um, thanks for joining me on this journey as we've talked about a little bit about this guy. Clicking that subscribe button is a small gesture for you, but it means the world to me. Everybody get the greater Hangar RC. We really appreciate your support. And uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you can get all the updates when we release new obstacles. 2024 is here. We've got a lot coming. You're gonna love it, I promise. So stay tuned to all our social media and with that being said, we hope to see you on the, look at those lights, They're pretty bright. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, we hope to see you on the trail, the micro trail with this guy. Pretty awesome. Go find it. Go get your crawl on and we'll see you on the trail.